Glory, glory, glory to our King. Glory, glory, glory to our King. To the Lamb who Ooh. was slain for our peace. To the Lamb who was slain for our peace. Glory, glory, glory to our King. Glory, glory, glory to our King. To the Lamb who was slain for our
Somebody give a praise in this house. We bless your name, Jesus. Hey, hallelujah to your name. Yes, Lord. Come on, say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the righteous one. To the majestic one. To the holy one. To the great I am.
he's a worthy God and we love him. If we can all turn with me to Psalms 8. Hallelujah. Psalms 8. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 3. Hallelujah. And it reads, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth who has set thy glory above the heavens out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger when I consider thy heavens and the work of thine figures the moon and the stars which thou has ordained father we bless your name on today oh God hallelujah we lift you up oh God there's nobody like you Jesus hallelujah there's nobody greater than you oh God hallelujah for your word declare that you are excellent hallelujah you are excellent your name is excellent everything about you is excellent hallelujah and father we invoke your presence even now into this service oh God and I'm on soya spirit of the living God fall fresh in this house on today oh God hallelujah father we pray oh God that you would have your way in this room oh God do what you want to do in this room save heal deliver set free oh God in the name of Jesus hey God we say have your way in this room father we pray that you arise God and that you let your enemy be scattered oh God oh God, and I'm sorry, touch the speaker on this morning in the name of Jesus. Look upon the choir, look upon the minstrels, oh God. Let your glory be here with us, oh God. Hanamaya, we love you on today, oh God. Father, even now we lift up the bereaved, oh God. We pray that you would comfort, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, your word declared, oh God, that you are near to the broken heart. Oh God. So Father, we pray, oh God, that you would comfort and keep them, oh God. In the name of Jesus, and I'm on the higher. Oh, help us, oh God, to put on a spirit of praise, oh God. Put on the garment of praise, oh God. For the spirit of heaviness, oh God. In the name of Jesus, and I'm on the Have your way in this room. Have your way in this room. Get the glory, oh God, out of everything that is done and we'll forever praise you come on come on people of God clap your hands right there come on we'll forever praise you come on open up your mouth right there we'll forever praise you and give you all the glory all the honor that is to your name in Jesus name we pray amen well come on and bless the name of the Lord isn't he's good? Isn't God great? We give him honor and glory on this morning. Greetings, peace and grace. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father, our Lord and Jesus Christ. We want to welcome our online audience, Facebook, YouTube. We thank you. We know that you could be watching someone else. But we thank you for tuning in with us, watching us to hear the word of God, to worship with us on this morning. Uh, do we have any first-time visitors today? Oh, praise God. Come on and give a clap, hand clap. We thank God that you came to visit us. We know that you could have stopped in many other places. But we thank you for coming to worship with us on today and have fellowship with us. Um, if you look on the uh, QR code, you can scan so we can keep up with you, um, let you know what's going on. Amen? Can we stand for the reading of our offering? Hallelujah. If we all got strength in our legs, can we all stand? If you're able to walk, can we all stand? Hallelujah. Amen. Offering confession. As we give today's tithes and offering and seed, we're believing God for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, business prosperity, sales and commission settlements, estates, and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, better yet, checks in my hand, gifts and surprises to my cash app, Zelle, PayPal, Venmo, 
and all electronic ways to transfer money. Finding money, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received, money paid back, loans paid off. I shall lend and not borrow. I shall prosper and be in health. I should give and be blessed. It's offering time. It's offering time. And I will praise the Lord. I will give cheerfully in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grace and peace. I'm Sean, and these are your weekly announcements. Every Sunday in April, the Bad Ministry is collecting coats for the community. Last year, we donated so many coats to children and adults, and this year, we want to do way more. So every Sunday in April, please see a Bad Team Ministry member and donate your coat. And while you're there with the Bad Team, they're also selling popcorn for the month of April. So please see the Welcome Center or a Bad Team Ministry member to donate a coat and to buy your popcorn. On May 10th from 7 to 10 p.m., let's join our mothers and the culture in Indy for Bible Bingo Night. The purpose of this event is to show gratitude to the mothers for all they do for us at this church and in our lives. So join us for food, fun, fellowship, and of course, bingo at New Zion Temple Indy presented by the culture. It's time for our quarterly leadership meeting. On Saturday, April 27th from 9.30 to 1.30, all leaders from both campuses will meet with our bishop so we can receive what he has to pour out to us. Attention all ministries. Does your ministry need new members? Here's a great chance to plug your ministry and jam. Join a ministry next Sunday, April 21st, immediately. Following service, the media team is going to record promotional videos using all ministries. This is your chance to be creative and do whatever you would like to bring new members into your ministry. So remember, next Sunday, April 21st, immediately following service, join us as we record promotional videos for the ministries for our jam. Join a ministry. See you there. Lord, everybody, I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. Is there anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord on this morning? I said, is there anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord on this morning? Why don't you show some sign if you're glad to be in his house on this morning? Put those hands together, stand to your feet, open up your mouth and give God a praise in this house. Oh, come on, it's a little dry in here this morning, but God is here. The presence of the Lord is here. His anointing is here. This is the glory zone. I'm gonna say it again. I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. Why are you glad? Because healing is in his house. Peace is in his house. Love is in his house. Joy is in his house. Everything that you need, you can find it in the house of the Lord. Come on and give him a shout in this house. I said, come on and give him a shout in this house. Raise up your praise. Raise up your praise. Let your level of praise be your level of expectation. Oh, come on. I know y'all don't see our bishop in here on this morning, but there is a word from God in this house. Come and raise up a praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. You've already been welcomed, but I'll welcome you again. Welcome to New Zion Temple Church. I want you all to do me a favor. Go and hug somebody. Show some love in the room on this morning. This is a loving church. If your neighbor did not speak to you, take a moment and speak to your neighbor. Sometimes all people need is
is a hug. You will be surprised what your hug can do for somebody. Hallelujah. You don't know what it took for people to make it into the sanctuary. You don't know how hard they had to press their way just to get here. Hallelujah. But we're grateful that you are here on this morning and our bishop sends his love. Hallelujah. He sends his love on this morning. And I just want to take a moment to thank you all for being so understanding during this very busy season that our bishop is in. It is just a season, but we are a church that supports our bishop. We love him. Let's send him some love on this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So thank you to each and every one of you that pressed your way out on this morning. We do have a word from God in this house. Hallelujah. And I'm just excited about Pastor Jarrell McDonald. He is a son of this house. And I just believe, I know that the Lord has given him a life-changing word to meet us right in our situation. Do you believe that? I said, do you believe that? I want you to put your right hand to our pastor, JR, and I want you to shout, preach him, Jesus. Say it again, preach him, Jesus. Hallelujah, you will be in his hands after the choir.
gotta trust him. Put your hands on it right there, come on. 
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. If you're happy to be in the presence of the Lord, come on, clap your hands everywhere. Can we just take a moment and give God praise for all that he has done, all that he is doing, all he's getting ready to do. I said, come on, let's give God some praise. Come on, let's give God some praise. Let's give God some praise. The Bible declares, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter to his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. Am I the only one that the Lord has been good to? Come on, if you know the Lord has been good, let's give God praise. I want your praise to match his goodness. Come on, let's have church while we're here. I said I want your praise to match his goodness. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul can't help but to cry out. Hallelujah. I thought I had a hallelujah, church. If you got a good hallelujah, I dare you to shout hallelujah. 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 We thank God for this opportunity. You all may be seated in the presence of our God. Our God is great. He is greatly to be praised. Can you do me a favor? Amen. Let's thank God for our bishop in his absence. Amen. Come on, y'all can help me. Let's thank God for our bishop. I know he's not here, but let's amen. Make him here wherever he is. Come on. While you're clapping, let's thank God for our first lady, executive pastor, Lady Vivian Jacobs. Love you. Thank God. And to the first family, to all of the ministers, to the leaders, and everyone who is in their rightful place, amen. We come testifying today that the Lord is good, amen, and his goodness deserves our best praise, amen. Amen. Now, you all know I'm not a lone preacher. The only thing that I ask of your amen, ask of you today is your amens. If you give uh, me your amens about 145, we can be walking out of here. Amen. Amen. Let's just have amen. A little church and gone on about our way. Find us a piece of chicken from somewhere. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come to say thank you. We thank you for this time of sharing. Thank you for this opportunity to stand before your people with the word from on high. Pray now, God, that you let us down into the deep treasure of your word and pull from it what your people need to hear. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon us. Make us, mold us, and create us to be everything that you're calling for us to be. We thank you today that this word is getting ready to free us. This word is getting ready to liberate us. This word is getting ready to give us victory in our lives. Send forth the anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. And by this, we simply ask you, have your way. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Let every heart say amen. If you can, amen. Let's thank God for a few people who have joined me today from the Peace Emmanuel Baptist Church. Amen. 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 My first lady is in the room. Amen. And for all you messy folk, that's my mama. Amen. Wave your hand, mama. <laughs> Amen. I always stayed until the Lord blesses me to get married. She's going to be the main one. Amen. I thank God for, amen, them being with us today. Gospel of John, chapter 9. Amen. Gospel of John, chapter 9. I need your prayers, Mama Elder. Amen. 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 Give us your good amens for about 15, 20 minutes, and we're going to be on out of here. Gospel of John, chapter 9. I'm going to reference verses... 1 through 25, but for the brevity of time, I just want to lift up for your hearing verse number 3. Amen. I wish in your study time that you would study, amen, verses 1 through 25, but again, amen, I um, want to just read verse number 3. I want to thank God for Deacon Weems today. Can we thank God for him? I often like to thank him because, amen, he still takes care of me. Amen. 
make sure that I'm all right. So I thank God for him. Amen. Chapter, uh, chapter 9, verse number 3, the Bible declares, Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Let me reread that again. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Uh, just for a few moments of your time today, I want to speak from this subject. This is bigger than you. This is bigger than you. Do me a favor. Encourage yourself and say, self, what I'm going through is bigger than me. The Bible declares, neither has this man nor his parents sinned. But he says that this is for the works of God to be made manifest. This is bigger than you. Mama Roz, it's good to see you as well. Amen. And Pop Tony, God bless you all. An American author named Bob Golf once declared, it always seems as if the people who are broken gets used more. Let me say that again. It always seems as if the people who are broken gets used more. It's probably because God has more pieces to work with. <laughs> I would imagine today that there are some in this room who have trouble receiving that reality because you feel like as if your brokenness has given you the permission or the license to abandon your purpose. Your brokenness has caused you to feel damaged, unfit, unqualified, incompetent, and even incomplete. And you have ultimately gotten yourself to the point in which you feel as if your life has nothing left to offer. But I've come today to protest or to call into question your emotions by asking you, what if God was strategically using your brokenness to fix other people's brokenness? <laughs> Please consider that you cannot, be, you cannot know God to be a heart fixer if your heart was never broken. Cannot know God to be a mind regulator if your mind was never broken. You cannot know God to be a healer until your body was broken. You cannot know God to be a provider until your resources have been broken. So maybe the reason why your brokenness is on display is because God wants to reveal to you and everybody else that your brokenness does not block his blessings. Somebody here ought to testify that when God's hand is on your life, he can turn your misery into a miracle. He can turn your flaws into favor. He can turn your pain into praise. He can turn your hurt and heartache into a hallelujah. Aaron, a songwriter, would testify, it is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others. He can also do it for you. So here's today's shout in the sermon. God still gives us a reason to shout even when our life is shattered. I can really sit down right there. How many of you all can testify that I've been through some things in my life? I've seen some storms. I've seen some heartache. I've seen some tears and some rain. But I thank God that he's covered me in the midst of it all. I could have been exposed. I, I should have been dropped. I even should be dead and sleeping in my grave. But I thank God that he's kept me. In the midst of it all. I wish I had a kept church here this morning. Who knows that God is able to keep you. Now unto him. Ooh, and is able to keep us from falling. As we settle inside the scene of this text for today, Jesus has just left from teaching the Jews in Mount Olivet, which is also known as the Mount of Olives. After escaping an evil attempt to stone him, the Bible says that Jesus passes by and he sees a man who has been blind since his birth. 
during this divine discovery, the Bible says that the disciples starts to ask Jesus this very important question. They said, who did sin? Is it because of this man or his parents that this man was born blind? This question from the disciples is so important to this narrative because ancient Jews had several beliefs concerning the correlation between sickness and sin. First of all, Jews believed that whenever one was sick, sin was the cause of them being afflicted. Secondly, Jews believed that infants could sin while they were in their mother's womb, that that could be the result of their affliction. Thirdly, Jews believed that a person's affliction could be the result of their parents' sin, and the punishment for their parents' sin was their child having a birth defect. Lastly, Jews believed in the doctrine of transmigration, which would suggest that whenever one dies, the sin of the dead transfers to the soul of someone who is in their bloodline. It is where we get the term generational curse. But no matter the thought or the belief behind this man's blindness, the text would suggest today that the disciple really makes a biased assumption because they thought that this man's condition was a casualty of his own crime. Please allow me to pause here right now just to suggest that if you are going to receive healing in this next season of your life, you cannot be triggered by people who misjudge you, who mishandle you, and miscommunicate your current condition. The truth is many of us are surrounded by people right now who see us for where we are, but they don't know the details as to how we got to where we are. They don't know that you've been fighting all of your life just to stay alive. They don't know you've been struggling all of your life just to have some peace. They don't know you've been crying tears at night just because you don't know how you're going to survive the next day. They don't know how you've plotted and planned to do something that is out of your character because you needed ends to be met and people will still have the nerve and the unmitigated gall to lie on you, gossip about you, and spread rumors all about you when they don't even know what it takes to be in your shoes. But I wonder if I have anybody here at New Zion Temple who is bold enough to declare that no matter what others have to say about me, my issue ain't my identity. I've come to tell somebody, yes, I got problems, but I'm still a child of God. Yes, I got flaws, but I'm a child of God. No, I may not be perfect like you, but I'm still a child of God. And here's my testimony. I've been lied on. I've been cheated. I've been talked about. I've been mistreated. I've been buked. I've been scorned. I've been talked about. Sure as I've been born, I've been up. I've been down. I've been level to the ground. But here's my shout for the day. As long as long as I ain't got you Negroes, as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. So the Bible goes on to declare, y'all sit down, got a little ways to go. The Bible declares that when the disciples ask Jesus, who did sin? Jesus immediately shoots down the disposition of the disciples. In verse number three of the text, Jesus declared, this man nor his parents have sinned, but this man is blind so that the works of God might be made manifest in him. In other words, Jesus was insinuating that this man being blind, I hope you catch it, he's blind because his blindness is bigger than him. <laughs> this man being blind is not of his own doing, but his, his being blind is, is for something that is bigger than him. We ought to get excited about this word manifest in this verse because it means to make known, to make evident, to make visible. Jesus uses this blind man to show other people that his deficiency has not disqualified him from being delivered. Lord have mercy. I've come to tell somebody today that the opinions of other people will never stop an opportunity for you to receive a miracle. 
It is a fact that some people don't want to see you blessed. Some, some people don't want to see you alive. Some, some people don't want to see you prosper. But I wonder if I have anybody here who knows that God will never allow somebody else to block what belongs to you. You got to have the kind of testimony. What God has for me, it is for me. I know without a doubt that God will bring me out. I believe that this text is going to show us just one quick point. I'm out your way as to what we must do when God's purpose becomes bigger than us. The one thing that we must do according to the text is expect uncommon experiences. We must expect uncommon experiences. Let's look at it right here in verse number six. I'd like to tell my church, read it with me because I don't want you to think I'm a lying prophet. Verse number six of the text, the Bible says, When Jesus had spoken, he spat on the ground. He made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. I read that, but y'all too calm for me. Let's read it again. When Jesus has spoken, Jesus spits on the ground, makes clay and puts it on the man's eyes. Y'all still bothering me because let somebody spit on you. Y'all acting like this is regular. This is, this ain't regular. This ain't common. Would you be okay with somebody spitting in the dirt and then rubbing it on your eyes? But Jesus uses an uncommon experience to anoint this man's eyes. Study of this verse would show that Jesus takes it upon himself to heal this man through an uncommon experience because he wants to show that God's power, listen to this, supersedes man's prognosis. It is noted that ancient Jews believed that the spittle or the saliva had medicinal benefits, which would suggest that it had the potential to cure sickness and disease. But Jesus does something more than just use his spit. The Bible says he mixes the spit with dirt in order to make clay, and then he anoints the man's eyes. Here's last the purpose of the clay, my brothers and sisters. Jesus uses the clay in order to show others that the common cure is not always the proper prescription. <laughs> I said the common cure is not all. Why? If the spit alone was the cure, this man could have been healed a long time ago. But Jesus uses this uncommon experience to show that this man's condition is something that only I can heal. This narrative will challenge all of us to know today that while we are waiting on God to move in our situation, hear me today, we cannot always look for God to move in familiar ways. Please consider that if the solution to your problem was that simple, you wouldn't need God's help. But the reason why we need God to intervene on our behalf is because there are just some situations that we go through that we cannot handle by ourselves. The Bible declares it like this. God chooses the foolish things to confound the wise. In other words, God has a way of showing us that our opinion does not matter when it comes to his will. (laughs) I got to say that again. Our opinion does not matter when it comes to his will. If God wants to go up instead of down, that's what he wants to do. If he wants to go in instead of out, that's what he wants to do. If he wants to go right instead of left, that's what he wants to do. Why? God is sovereign, which would suggest that he can do whatever he want to do, whenever he wants to do it, and however he wants to do it. Do me a favor and tell your neighbor, get out of God's way. But please take notice with me one more thing, and I promise I'm out your way. One more part of this narrative, because not only, Aaron, did this man have to experience something different, he also had to participate in something that was different. Look at verse number seven. 
I'm going to read this slowly because I want y'all to get it. Jesus tells a blind man, go. Tracy, you with me? Verse number seven, Jesus tells a blind man, go. I feel like you still ain't getting it. Jesus tells a blind man, how in the world can a blind man go anywhere? I, I, want, I, want, I want you to paint the picture with me. If you were blind and somebody tells you go, your first question is, where am I going? But he tells him to go and wash in the pool of Salome. There lies an issue with this command from Jesus in the text because if you're inquisitive like me again, how can you tell a blind man to go any place he's never seen? This man has never seen a day in his life. Yet the cure for his condition is to go and wash himself in a pool that he's never been in. Here's last the purpose of the text this afternoon. Jesus would suggest that he sends this blind man to the pool just to see, listen to me, if he has enough power, if he has enough faith to participate in his own healing. Hebrew writer says it like this, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things. I can't see it right now, but if God tells me to do it, I got to do it. I don't know how God is going to heal me, but if he tells me to do it, I got to trust his word. I'm going to tell somebody today that if you have the courage to walk by faith in this next season of your life, God says your next blessing is in your blind spot. Tell somebody your next blessing is in a place that you can't see. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I dare you to give them praise right now because you don't know what this next season looks like, but you know if God said it, that settles it. If God said it, I'm just going to take him at his word and trust that my healing is in where he tells me to go. Hasten on to a close. The Bible goes on to declare that when the people saw that this blind man was healed, they asked him, how did your eyes become open? The man responds back and he declares, a man called Jesus anointed my eyes and he told me to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And when I went to go and wash in the pool, my eyes received their sight. But a few verses later, we got some Negroes in the text. I believe they black people because they hating on them now. <laughs> the people who heard about this miracle started to condemn Jesus, saying that he was a sinner because he did not observe the Sabbath day. But the man responded. He says, I don't, I don't know whether Jesus is a sinner or not. He says, all I know is I once was blind. <laughs> but now... But now I see. Therefore, I've come by to tell somebody today that whenever God does something miraculous in your life, you ought not be ashamed to tell somebody what the Lord has done for you. You ought to testify that declares amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind. But now I see through many uh, dangerous toils and snares. I, I've already come. It was grace uh, that brought me safe thus far. And, oh, it was grace uh, that shall lead me on. Look at somebody in the room uh, and say, neighbor, I've got a testimony uh, that you should shout with me today. Say, neighbor, I've been through the fire. Uh, and I've been through the flood. I've seen lightning flashing from up above. Hey, but through it all, I remember that he loves me and he even cares. And I found out that he won't put more upon me. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He won't put more on me than I am able to bear. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, I almost quit, but his hand is on me. I almost gave up, but his hand is on me. I almost threw in the towel, but his hand is on me. And because his hand is on me, I've got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will, God will, God will, he will. Look at somebody and tell you, he'll take care of you. Beneath his wings of love about God will. God will. He will. Do me a favor and grab somebody next to you and say, neighbor, I know you've been going through. I know you've been suffering. I know you've been experiencing some pain. But say, neighbor, I got your hand because I want you to know what it feels like to hold the hand of a survivor. I want you to know what it feels like to hold the hand of a miracle. I want you to know what it feels like to hold the hand of a blessing. And if you are happy for me, and I'm happy for you, let's give God some praise together. I dare you to praise him for your healing. I dare you to praise him for your healing. I dare you to praise him for your healing. If you need to be healed in that season, praise the Lord. Y'all must don't need to be healed. Because if you need to be healed, I dare you to praise some in expectation of what God is getting ready to do. You better praise him because it's bigger than you. You better praise him because it's bigger than you. Somebody will testify that eyes have yet to see, ears have yet to hear. Neither has an entrance to the heart of man. The great things he has in store. Somebody ought to shout.
and it shall not be otherwise. And it is so, and it is done. We won't live in fear, but you're going to live to see it happen. You're going to live to see it happen. I cancel premature death. We cancel it now in the mighty name of Jesus. He's touching our men from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. He's touching our men. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And we give him praise. 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 Hallelujah. Send Judah first. And we give him praise. And we give him praise and we thank him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. Hallelujah. You might be here today and you are not saved. You don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin. Today is your day. Now is your time. This is your moment. Don't leave this place today if your soul is not safe. Come get to know a man named Jesus. He can save you. He can heal you. He can deliver you from whatever it is that you're struggling with. Give him a chance today. Will there be one? Will there be one? If you are not saved, now is your time. Oh, I think we have one coming. Do we or is he sitting down? I think we have. Oh, no. Do we have anybody else? Anybody. Hallelujah. Or you might be saved and you don't have a pastor. You don't have a church home. Well, we have an amazing pastor here who preaches and teaches the unadulterated word of God. And we welcome you to join our family. This is a family. We welcome you to join us at this time. Hallelujah. If you need a church home, you need a covering. You need a pastor. And if you are standing in need of one, this is your day. Now is your time. I beg of you, even as our bishop always says, for you to come, for you to come, hallelujah, and be a part of this body, for you to come and receive salvation. Will there be one? We'll wait on you. Neighbor, tell, I want you to look to your neighbor, look to the left of you and to the right of you and ask the person next to you, are they saved? Do they have a church home? Do they have a pastor? If they say no and they agree, bring them up to the front. You don't have to walk alone. You don't have to walk alone. Hallelujah. Salvation is here for you today. We welcome you to this body. We welcome you to this family. We see there are none, but yet there is room. Let's put our hands together for a safe and a covered house. In Jesus' name. It is offering time. Hallelujah. This is still a part of worship. And I get excited about offering. I get excited to give. Is anybody excited to give that he's giving you seed to put in the ground? Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to get your tithe and your offering in your hand at this time. And when you have it, stand with me. We welcome you also on our virtual church to join us in our giving. YouTube and Facebook. Follow the prompts on the screen and give with us on today. Amen. The ways to give are on the screen. We are giving our tithe and we are giving our offering at this time. Get it in your hand. Even if you are giving electronically, we want you to stand. Everybody standing. Everybody in New Zion Temple walks. Hallelujah. 
we believe in the altar we want you to pass by the altar and even if you're giving electronically you can wave your phone over the basket amen everyone standing with something in your hand nothing is too big and nothing is too small get your tithe and your offering so you can participate in this portion of the service with us amen hallelujah i'm still waiting on some of you to stand get your offering in your hand and when you have it put it in your right hand and wave it in the air and repeat after me i am blessed my home is blessed my job is blessed my marriage is blessed my family is blessed my home is blessed and i'm doing my best to be a blessing to my church in jesus name now shout this is my big year and i'm expecting big things in jesus name follow the leading of our doorkeepers at this time and come around with your offering please thank you so much We're going to dismiss and pray over the offering at the same time. Let's keep all of our announcements in mind. Amen. As you heard on the announcements, our next is now. We are seeding into our church for our annual building fund. And so we know what everyone has been, what's been required of everyone. So please, let's follow that and get it in on time. Church, can we do it? We know we have a church of integrity and a pastor of integrity, hallelujah. And so we are going to do what is required of us during this time. Also keep in mind that Bible study is this Wednesday and we will be in the building in our Hammond location, amen. We will be right here and we want to see each and every one of you out uh, at 7 p.m. on this Wednesday. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. We thank you, Lord God, for this offering. We thank you for everyone that had to give and even those that had not. We pray and ask, Lord God, that you would bless this offering 100-fold so that it is more than enough, oh God. We speak increase, abundance, and overflow, oh God, to every giver, Father. We thank you for the word of God through Pastor J.R. McDonald. Hallelujah. We thank you for that awesome 
awesome on time anointed word and we pray and ask Lord God that you would pour back into him oh God everything that he poured out unto us oh God and we pray and ask that you would touch our bishop even where he is oh God and send strength to his body bless us and keep us father as we leave this place but never from your divine presence or power cover us under your blood father hallelujah we thank you for your hand of protection being over us oh God we thank you for keeping us in all of our ways oh God we'll give your name all the glory all the praise and all the honor in Jesus name we do pray thank God and amen hug somebody next to you and tell them you love them Here's a place for you and me, New Zion. There's a word that is said. Grace and peace. I'm Sean, and these are your weekly announcements. Every Sunday in April, the Bad Ministry is collecting coats for the community. Last year, we donated so many coats to children and adults, and this year, we want to do way more. So every Sunday in April, please see a Bad Team Ministry member and donate your coat. And while you're there with the Bad Team, they're also selling popcorn for the month of April. So please see the Welcome Center or a Bad Team Ministry member to donate a coat and to buy your popcorn. On May 10th from 7 to 10 p.m., let's join our mothers and the culture in Indy for Bible Bingo Night. The purpose of this event is to show gratitude to the mothers for all they do for us at this church and in our lives. So join us for food, fun, fellowship, and of course, bingo at New Zion Temple Indy presented by the culture. It's time for our quarterly leadership meeting. On Saturday, April 27th from 9.30 to 1.30, all leaders from both campuses will meet with our bishop so we can receive what he has to pour out to us. Attention all ministries. Does your ministry need new members? Here's a great chance to plug your ministry and jam. Join a ministry next Sunday, April 21st, immediately. Following service, the media team is gonna record promotional videos using all ministries. This is your chance to be creative and do whatever you would like to bring new members into your ministry. So remember, next Sunday, April 21st, immediately following service, join us as we record promotional videos for the ministries for our jam. Join a ministry. See you there.